the app here is called Money Pickle. And the point of the app is that anyone can go and speak to a financial professional for $1.50 a minute. And we don't have to pay some of the higher fees that are typically associated with it. You don't necessarily need the 100K that it takes to speak to one of these people. Um, so in this case, um, what we wanted to do was pre-authorize before the call and then based on the amount of time that the call takes, we want to charge the client. Now, if you've worked with these kind of things before, then you know it's not really easy to do. So how did we do it? It, uh, <laughs> it was a little complex, but maybe not too crazy now that we've solved it and hopefully this can be helpful to you. So the component that we used um, there are a couple. Actually, no, you know, the uh, the really important one here is our web view. Um, and outside of that, it's all standard Adalo components. Now, this is our web view, the Pragma Flow uh, Better Web View, I suppose is the nickname. And the reason it's better is because it can actually detect the URL of the page that you are on and then take actions based on that. So we can automate uh, web flow. Webflow. We can automate uh, web view experiences as part of the app and we can respond to what's happening in the web view, which creates a really integrated experience and kind of completes some of the workflows that are hard to solve when the Adalo app itself cannot understand what's happening in the web view. Okay, so how does it work? If you take a look on this page, we have a hidden countdown. Hidden countdowns are really useful for doing page actions where we're using a custom action. There is a known bug in Adalo, and I hope one of you will tell me that I'm just a dinosaur that's been fixed. But the bug was that if you used a custom action and you return information or data, then you cannot use that data in the next actions if that custom action was a page action, meaning if it is when you land on the page, an action that fires. So what we do to work around that is create a countdown, 0.1 second. I think you can do zero, but something, I don't know, just I guess it's after the page loads or the component. It just it feels like a better idea. So what's happening in here? All right, there are a few things. So first, we are creating the checkout instance. And, you know, I realize I actually am going to have to back up, but let's talk through this and you'll understand why I'm going to zoom out. So we have the Adalo call record ID. This is the ID of the record in the Adalo database so that when we do our action, which is going to happen in make.com, and then afterwards we want to update the record, we're going to know which record to update. So we'll talk more about that in a second. So we're sending the current Adalo record, we are sending the user's email, and we're sending their name. So what's happening when we do that? Okay, so if we take a look, this is the Stripe instance generator. Now, why do we even need to generate an instance? What's all this about? On the next screen over here, what's going to happen is in this web view, we're going to load up a Stripe checkout. And so by using the web view, we are never actually in the Adalo app. The client is never putting their information into the Adalo app. What's happening is they're giving it to Stripe directly through Stripe's checkout process. But that is not a static page. There's not just, hey, Stripe, let me go to your checkout page. Uh, in fact, you have to say, hey, Stripe, make a checkout page for this user for this reason so they can check out. And that makes sense because we want security. We don't just want people showing up at the, you know, and doing whatever they want and being able to modify things. So we start with the custom webhook and you can see in some of our past videos how to just do the basics of setting up a custom action with a webhook. Now, this webhook is... Um, here, let's take a look. I want to show you, well, this is the data actually that it's expecting, what I showed you here before, the Adalo record ID, the user's email, and the user's full name. So we go through here. Now, we have some filters, and let's see why. <laughs> I've kind of forgotten how we set this up. Perfect. Okay, so we have a thing on there called request type, and if it's empty, if it's empty, no, if it contains create, and so let's just take a look at where that's coming from. When we go into our custom action over here, we can see that we have request type also, and this is hard coded. The reason it's hard coded is because this request is always going to be create. So we go along this route, and what happens? We create a customer. So we need to create a Stripe customer uh, so that they know, you know some information about the person. So all we need to provide is the email and name. 
Um, and then when we go over here, we request intent checkout instance. So what is an intent checkout instance? An intent is essentially one of the ways that Stripe does pre-authorization. So we're declaring an intent for the client to pay in the future. And so we use the v1 slash checkout slash sessions, and you can check out the Stripe API documentation for more there. Um, and then we have to send these keys, the payment method type, which in this case is card. The mode is setup, and setup is because we're setting up an intent. Uh, the customer, we have customer ID here, which we got from the create a customer. That's the value that was returned. And you can see when I mouse over it, the uh, Stripe... Uh, number 10, it's a little hard to see, create a customer, is kind of pulsing happily there, which is a nice UI effect. And then success URL. So where are we going to go if things are successful? We have this URL right here, and that actually is, I believe, this webhook as well. Now, the other thing is request type equals success. We'll talk about what's going to happen there in just a second. And then we have the cancel URL, and that's if there is not a success. So we're going to redirect to two different URLs, and they're both this webhook, but the only difference is the parameter, uh, which you can see after the question mark here, the parameter request type equals failed or equals success. So again, we'll come back to that. Finally, with the response that we've gotten here, which will include the instance ID, what we are doing is, first of all, we have a pre-auth ID. So if the status code is 200, meaning if there's success, then we're taking the body setup intent, which is again returned as you can see from the previous step. All right, next we have pre auth instance created. Um, so this is again something that we're using. Uh, you know what? Let's let's flip back to what happens next because I don't think this has great context yet. So when we um, when we get our response, right, um, and it is going to update the Adalo record. Uh, so what's going to happen is after this action runs, we're going to take one of two, um, two follow-up actions. We're either going to link to pre auth 2 which is the page where we're going to show the checkout instance now that we have the ID, or we're going to link to pre auth error if we found that there was an error. Okay, so how are we determining this? The way we're determining it is sometimes... So I have to find a good way to do this with the constraints that Adalo offers. I like to avoid the possibility of something actually falling in two categories or maybe a response that falls in neither because then we'll jam. We need, to, we need to cover all the range of possibilities. So I decided to use a numerical code um, because that's anyways how we often send the response. And so what that means is if the checkout response is between 200 and 299, we're calling that a success. Sometimes it returns 201s, I want to say. Uh, so I decided to account for the whole range. Now, if we hit a 301, that's a redirect. I don't think I want to mess with that. I think we're going to call that an error. So <laughs> being a bit conservative. And so here we go. Um, if, oh yeah, actually, funny story. So maybe I'll fix this to greater than 300. So we haven't gotten a 300 yet, but I did leave a range where nothing would happen and, and that would be weird. So now it's fixed. Uh, so if it's a redirect or a 400 or 500, which are authorization or server errors, then we're just going to go to the pre-auth error screen. Okay, so how do we send that response back? That's what we're doing here. So if we have the status code equals 200, because it is essentially, uh, I probably could also mirror on this side um, the same conditions. And it would probably be wise to, I haven't hit an error yet, so I'm going to just leave it for the sake of the fluid of this tutorial, but we could say if status code is between instead of equals. But if it equals 200, we send back the intent to Adela. If um, then we have to say, is the pre auth instance created? And we're using this just to understand on the call, can we advance the user? Do they have a pre auth instance? This is our tracking. So again, uh, if it is, if this is true, then we are sending the, uh... oh yeah, sorry. So if this is uh, successful, we're sending true, if not false. By the way, here we're sending nothing if it is false. And you can just see if you mouse over the if, how this works, and uh, when you're in make, you can easily see that. So the current pre-auth URL. Um, so if this is not 200, then we say failed. If it is 200, then it is, uh, again, the body URL coming from the last instance. And this URL is what we will plug in to the web view. 
All right, finally, the Stripe customer ID, which we're going to return. Uh, we aren't going to store customer credentials, uh, but the customer ID itself is um, something that's useful to invoke later. All right, so that is the first half. And um, at the end of it, we're going to return the URL and response code. Um, and so basically, here we go. This is the response to the actual webhook. So this is what Adalo is going to see as a response. So at the end of this flow, uh, whatever's happened, unless it went along this bad request route, um, it's going to receive URL, which is the URL, and it's going to receive response status code. Now, I think there's a bit of redundancy here at this point because you're seeing us having worked through a couple of iterations of how to do this, and it probably needs a pruning. Uh, so I don't believe that is still useful. But what's really cool is you can use webhooks from make.com to directly respond to the actual, um, so you can control what is returned to the custom action in Adalo because the fields that show up are the fields that are here. So when I run this and do my test, I'll see URL and response at the end. Okay, so what we will do, I think, is pause here and come back to a part two video on how to finish this up.